what is going on youtube it's jake coming at you with yet another video on the advent of cyber we're on challenge nine today and i think we're going to be getting into some of our first ever networking challenges where is all the data going and let me tell you i am excited because i love i love networking challenges love anything packet related uh the web exploitation was it was drowning me out i was like oh my gosh so much web but here we go let's Let's do something new, guys. Uh, Mick Skitty recently found out that a large amount of traffic is entering one system on the network. You use your traffic analysis skills to determine what kind of activities Grinch Enterprises are performing. And they actually gave us a little PCAP file right here, which has a bunch of information, which we'll be um, looking at later. But this is like, you know, or this is not your red team scenario. This is your blue team. We're going to be the system admin. Um, actually, in this challenge here, you know, and it's a really real world scenario. You're the network administrator and a bunch of traffic is hitting one of your servers. You're like, hmm, I should probably look into this. What is going on? What's happening? And the tool we're going to be using today is Wireshark. As you can see here, Wireshark. Um, if you're a fan of the show, then you've definitely seen this before. It's our way of looking at the individual internet packets that travel to our machine. Um, and it's definitely needed. I mean, <laughs> you would you would think that, oh, I only have two applications open. Like, there can't be that much internet traffic uh, happening <laughs> all at once. But no, you're freaking wrong, dude. <laughs> Within, like, every second, I swear, like, 100 packets spawn. It's kind of overwhelming. It's kind of crazy. But that's why we have great software tools to help us out and perform. But um, here we go. I mean, Wireshark, I mean, ugh, Wireshark. Try and hack me. Does a great job of explaining how Wireshark works, which is why I love it. I mean, you just open up a challenge and you have all the context, all the information you could ever possibly want before starting. So here we go. We have our command menus, you know, it's great. Filter, we're gonna be using that a lot. Uh, the list of packets, as you can see here, all the packets we're capturing individually. The packet headers, so this is like your OSI model, you know, the, the data, the networking, the TCP um, layer and all that jazz, port layers. Good stuff. And on the final bottom, as you can see here, we have uh, the actual message in, in hex and ASCII, which is great. Okay. So we're doing this challenge, that's great. And I think it just kind of walks through how we're gonna be you know, using the software and what it all means. I think that everyone watching this is, I'm gonna give you all the benefit of the doubt, we're good. We understand what an HTTP get um, packet is. We understand what an HTTP post packet is. That's writing data to the server and the get is receiving data from the server DNS. You know, your classic port 53, your address book, converting IP addresses to, you know, URLs like so. Um, like they say, a giant phone book, it's per perfectly, that's exactly what it is. Um, and we can filter all that, which is great. They even show you a picture of how to do it. Super cool. And um, yeah, just a bunch of information on how to use Wireshark, especially if this was your first time looking at it. And at any point, if y'all wanna, you know, pause the video and read, by all means, go for it. This is going to be, you know, this is their first networking challenge. So it's probably going to be pretty basic, um, but it is what it is. So we are going to start by analyzing this traffic. Again, we have someone that is, there's a bunch of traffic coming to our server. So we're just going to go through the process of analyzing it. And part of that process is just answering the challenges that they throw at us. So that is our way of analyzing. Um, and it looks like, so we're going to be, I think, I don't even think we need to open this. So in the HTTP one request section, which directory is found on the web server. So you can see here, we have our Git request and let's just open this guy up. HTTP request method is going to be equal to Git, not post. We'll change that up. And I wonder if it's possible to zoom in on this guy for y'all so that way you don't have to squint that'd be great um so we're looking at the git request here and if i think the challenge was talking about you know what is the directory okay 
And I think what they wanted us to learn from this part of the challenge is that you can see on the get request uh, where you're receiving your information from. I mean, you see on here, on the right side of the screen, all the uh, directories where you're getting it from. So it's not just you're getting this from the server, you're getting this information from the server at this directory. So it's gonna be the login directory, I believe. We'll see what happens. Great. Oh, look at that, boys. Oh, y'all can't see my face is hiding it, but we got a two answer streak. Big money, big money. What is the username and password used to log into the page in the HTTP2 post section? Okay, so now instead of filtering by Git, we're going to filter by post. Come up here, post. And we only have a couple of post uh, requests, which is, you know, expected. Probably just trying to log in. And so if I click on this packet, I can come down here to... So there is your HTTP protocol, which is like all your information about your browser and what you're using to send it on. And at the very end here, there is the HTML form. So this is the, the login form on the page, and this is the data that's encoded in it. So we open that up, maybe, hopefully. And we have a great name, Mick Skitty, and the password uh, Christmas 2021. So we will come down here and type that, I think. Mix Skitty, and then uh, Christmas 2021. If I have to copy and paste, I will, but let's just roll with it. And what is the user agent's name that has been sent in that post request? No problem, boss, we come up here. The user agent will always be in the HTTP protocol layer because that's where that information resides. If you wanted to find something about the port, you would look in, you know, your transfer control TCP section here. If you wanted to find out, like, um, you know, the, yeah, yeah, your networking information, kind of like where it's going, who it's coming from, it's time to live, all that stuff. So it's, it's very segmented when it comes down to, I think we're looking for user agent. That's going to be definitely a HTTP problem. So we come down here, we look and we see that we have a user agent. Oh my God, please. Oh my god, please let me copy that. <laughs> Don't. Uh, let's, let's copy this value here. Don't let me uh, type that all out. All right, so let's see what it, it comes back. Oh, beautiful. Easy money. That was actually my first time copy and pasting So on, on Wireshark. That was crazy cool. Very useful. Uh, in the DNS section, there is a text DNS query. What is the flag in the message of that DNS query? Okay, so we're gonna find a DNS query and we're going to, yeah, what's the, what, okay. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see what comes up. So we go into DNS here and we're gonna be looking for, there's a bunch of them here. I see that they're, okay. Okay, okay, okay. There's a text DNS query. And what is the flag? Okay. Well, let's see here. Wow. Okay, guys. They really wanted you to search for this. I guess when they wanted, when they were saying search for the TXT, um, they were searching for this part. Oh, machine's gonna expire soon. Oh no. We're not really using it. We're actually using our own machine, so that's fine. Um, yeah, so when they were saying, like, find the TXT uh dns query they're literally talking about well they're talking about this guy all the way down here I'm like oh my goodness man i had to i had to search for this guy jeez okay so let's go on ahead follow this udp stream and would you look at that there is a flag here and i you know i'm not too sure if that um what what actually I need to probably look into it, but what these DNS packets are actually doing, you know, you can kind of get a high level of this is asking a question. This one's coming back with an answer, but it seems like um, each one of these codes, each one of these is like truly different, which is which is interesting. So let's come back to here. Be given our answer Sweet. in the FTP section. What is the FTP login password? Okay, so now we're switching it up. Let me zoom it back in. I had to like really look at all those packets. I was like, what is going on? 
Uh, we go into FTP mode, and it's going to be logging in with a password. So we have a login successful. Okay, that probably means that there's, yeah, specifying the password here. Hit it with that follow. Probably didn't need to do it, um, but it never hurts. It never hurts. So it seems like the username is going to be tryhack, FTM, and the pass is tryhack. Sweet. And which information do we have to give on this guy? The FTP login password. Bada bing, bada boom. And in the FTP section, what is the FTP command used to upload the secret.txt file? So within the FTP protocol, there's going to be different. There's going to be different commands that are used within that. And if we can see here, uh, my eyes were just looking for the secret.txt, if I'm being honest. But you can see that there is the store command right here. So it's storing the secret.txt, request command, store. And the arguments pass, secret.txt, okay. That's fine. So store. And in the FTP section, what is the consent of, or the, the consent, what is the content of the secret file? And interestingly enough, you're not actually looking for the FTP protocol, you're looking for the FTP data protocol, um, which I was intrigued when I found out about this guy. I was like, what? It's not sent over FTP? FTP data, guys. It's its own protocol. Um, and we can see here, so in the FTP data, you have it all here. In the line-based line, line -based text data, we can see and um, Wireshark will automatically decode this for us. So it's one, two, three, little happy face. Three, two, one. I think we can go on ahead and actually uh, copy this. Copy the value. Come in here. AOC flag. Let me get rid of that. Oh, man. Okay. Is there a space here? Nope. Oh, there's a new line here. Let's get rid of that. Chink. Bada bing, bada boom. So that was a short demo on how to use Wireshark and what it can be used for. I mean, you kind of saw... We will switch it here. So yeah, that's kind of how Wireshark works. You know, the, the use case of it is looking through your, um, your web traffic and you see that we can, you know, see other packets, we can filter, and we can find out a lot of stuff. And it's super helpful. It compartmentalizes it into like all its different layers for you. So if you're looking for data, you look for the packet, you look for the layer of the data that you want it, and bink, it's there. You can even copy it directly off the packet, which is super fun. Um, yeah, I guess I would say one caveat to this is that it was all decrypted in that um, PCAP file. Usually when you're looking at the real world, real world um, data that comes in Wireshark, it's almost always gonna be encrypted with uh, TLS and you'll have to get a key to unlock um, that TLS encryption before you can actually read the data. So yeah, thanks for watching.